You know, events and occasions like this, you take, you take stock of, of where you've come from. When I was a boy, I dreamed, and that really has not changed. Hope is a very powerful word filled with promise and potential. But all hope needs a home. It needs a place where it lives and breathes. I was born to an African-American father and uh, an Irish mother. I was one of my mother's five children, all with different fathers. My mother was white, my father was black, and so nobody knew quite what to do with me. Should I be with the white family or should I be with the black family? Not recognizing or, or realizing that I just needed a place where there was going to be some love there and some care there. My mother battled alcoholism her entire life, and it's not a battle that she was ultimately victorious. My father never told anybody that he had a son, and so when he was tragically murdered when I was five years old, there was no one from his side that even knew that I existed. My parents, regrettably, weren't particularly responsible um, for my care, and so off I went. And I was sent off into foster care, and some of that had to do with the social construct that was raised. Um, and bounced around from place to place throughout my early childhood and well into my teenage years. And yet, had anyone dared ask me, I simply would have said, a place where there is love and care is all I really need. It doesn't matter who you are and what you look like. That would be home to me. When I look at my life and where I am, perhaps the best example that I could ever give to you was a conversation I had with my six-year-old son. And we read every morning, and he was sitting on my lap, and out of nowhere, I thought he was going to ask me a question about the lion and the mouse. That's what we were reading. And he, he paused and he looked up at me and he said, Daddy, when you were a little boy, did you have a daddy? And I, and I paused for a moment. I was expecting to have to answer that question a little bit later. And then I decided, well, let me do what no one ever did with me. Let me tell him the truth. And I said, no, son, when I was a little boy, I, I didn't have a daddy. And his brow furrowed. And because he really didn't understand that answer. And then his eyes brightened. And he said, as only a child could say, maybe next time you'll have a daddy. I graduated from Boston College in 1989 with a degree in political science. When I arrived uh, on the campus, I noticed almost immediately that a lot of my classmates were and had arrived with their parents. I arrived with all my belongings in a single suitcase and I could see that my classmates were actually um, ready to leave home and, and for me I was, I was still trying to find home. At the same time I had a lot of questions about having no knowledge as to who I even looked like and more importantly where I belonged. What I also represent is a very long history. My grandfathers, one immigrated from Ireland and the other from the West Indies. Even though they were aware of one another, they never talked. They never got the chance to realize just how much they had in common. And so in my quiet moments with my children around me, I think of my grandfathers often. And I wish that I could make time my friend. I wish I could slow it down. And I wish I could go back and introduce Joseph Murphy and Joseph Pemberton. Maybe we would go to a Red Sox game or play a round of golf. And I would just sit back and just hear and watch their conversation. And I'm hopeful that over the course of that time, they would realize just how much they had in common, as opposed to how much was different. And I would like to think that at some point, their conversation would turn to me, their grandson, who reflects the best of both of them, and whose middle name is after both of them. That they would look at each other in an entirely different way, and in an entirely different light, and say, Joe, we've done good. We've done good. Because they have done good.